the reason that I think people are don't trust it is because it does help so many things. Because the endocannabinoid system that it interacts with is the master system in your body and it, it's in charge of all the other systems in your body. So if anything is wrong in any other system, it's the endocannabinoid system's responsibility for bringing you back to homeostasis. Welcome to the Wear Wag Repute Podcast. I'm Tori Mystic. As a dog mom lifestyle expert, blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. Continuing with the Holistic Pet Health mini-series from episodes 228 and 229, this week I have a jam-packed conversation with an amazing guest. Nobody has practiced more medical cannabis on pets than Angela Ardolino. Back in 2015, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and rather than taking synthetic prescribed medications she started taking cannabis to help with the pain. She found that it also helped relieve the stress and anxiety around her diagnosis. She was so impressed that she sold her business at the time and threw herself into the cannabis industry. In her research, Angela learned that dogs have more cannabinoid receptors than humans do, making CBD even more effective for them. And this is how she found her passion for combining cannabis and animals. However, this was in 2016, and she had to wait to launch her business until the farm bill passed two years later. While she waited, Angela bought a dog grooming salon. What she saw working there is that about 70% of dogs who came in were suffering from diabetes, rashes, anxiety, and other things. Buying the grooming shop turned out to be the perfect coincidence because she was able to spend those two years developing and sampling her line of all-natural CBD salves and tinctures with her furry customers and talking to pet parents about them. This conversation covers her business journey and also how to choose the right CBD products for your dogs. We also touch on medicinal mushrooms, which is turning out to be quite the hot topic of the past few weeks. If you enjoy this episode, make sure to go back and listen to 228 with Sarah Grace Newhall of Dog Love Oils and 229 with Aisha Louvert of Amisha Animal Wellness. These three episodes will get you informed on essential oils, medicinal mushrooms, and CBD for your pets. Please share this pet parent mini series with your friends. You can find sharing links in any podcast app or tell them to click over to wherewagrepeat.com slash podcast. Angela Ardolino is a holistic pet expert who has been caring for animals for over 20 years. When she's not educating the public, running CBD dog health, or at Fire Flake Farm, she is at her grooming shop, Beautify the Beast. Angela has a background in broadcast journalism and has appeared on television and radio shows, including nationally syndicated daytime. In 2016, she earned a professional certification in medical cannabis biology and its therapeutic uses from the University of Vermont College of Medicine. That year, she hosted Canna Conference to educate doctors, veterinarians, and patients about the positive effects of medical cannabis and how it reacts in the endocannabinoid system. In addition to this work, Angela is also the founder of Myco Dog, a sustainable mushroom tincture line designed for dogs, and the online store Your Natural Dog, where she handpicks natural products alongside trusted holistic vets. Hello, Angela. Hey there. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I I struggled with a few of the words. Did I say endocannabinoid correctly? You did. I, you know, you can say endocannabinoid, endocannabinoid, you know, there's no, but you said it right. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, welcome to the podcast. Um, 
like we were saying before I hit record, you just do so many really cool things in the pet industry. And I want to ask you about all of it. And so I guess we'll start with asking you to kind of go back and how did you first get interested in the pet industry? Was there a certain pet or like a certain light bulb moment that was your jumping off point? Yes. Um, So what I did first is that I have a rescue farm where I rescue farm animals and dogs. Um, So that was like a passion project that I have been doing for many years now. I've always loved animals. I've always been rescuing them. So that was my way to fulfill that passion of taking care of animals. What happened next was in 2015, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and I didn't want to take the prescription medication that was prescribed to me because it had been linked to cancer and I was not interested in that. I live a very natural lifestyle. I try not to have any toxins. Everything's natural, everything I use. So um, that's how I discovered cannabis, um, which I took to for my rheumatoid arthritis and not only did it get rid of my you know joint pain but my stress and anxiety levels went down and I could not understand why everybody didn't know about this so this is also when we're in my state I live in Florida we're voting to make it medical marijuana legal so I became an advocate at the time I had a magazine it was a, a family magazine so I started reporting on stories on how it was helping kids And I just kept learning more and more about it and decided to sell my business and throw myself into the medical cannabis industry because I could not believe how it was helping so many people. Um, Because of that, I became a huge advocate. I was, you know, very outspoken about its benefits. I was invited to the University of Vermont School of Medicine inaugural class for the study of medical cannabis. And there is where I discovered that animals have the endocannabinoid system like we do. And that dogs in particular um, really benefit from this medicine because it had already been proven that they had more receptors than we did. So a lot, a little bit of medicine goes a really long way with dogs. So when I learned that, that's when I knew that that's where I was going to land in the industry. I was like, okay, my newfound passion cannabis, my old passion animals, now I get to bring them together. Well, this is in 2016. And I had to wait for the farm bill to pass in 2018. So between those two years, I traveled the world. I sourced the best uh, other plants and I have other ingredients in my tinctures like frankincense and turmeric and lavender. Um, So sourcing those, but I literally couldn't do anything until 2018. So I actually became crazy and bored and looked up Googled whether there was a business I could buy that was either in agriculture or animals and the groom shop down the, down the street was for sale. (laughs) So I bought that. Um, I say it's one of the best and worst things that I ever did, but the best thing was that it was a very busy groom shop that I made even busier. And I, I could see what was being done in the industry and a lot of the toxic chemicals that they use, the terrible shampoos and conditioners, the things that they use to clean the place, you know, that are, that were making staff sick that, you know, make our, and this is what's being used around the animals all the time. So I transformed it into an all natural salon. So we only use the best shampoos and conditioners. But what it showed me more than anything is that most dogs are suffering. I would say 75 to 80% of all dogs that came into our shop, and we see like 70 dogs on a Friday, are suffering, whether it was allergies or obesity or, you know, lameness or rashes and bumps and lumps and whatever. So literally what it enabled me to do was create a line of tinctures and salves that literally handled every ailment I saw come through that door. Um, And then for two years, be able to put it on them, practice, use it, perfect it. So that by the time 2018 came around, I had hundreds and hundreds of cases uh, that I have already helped with animals. 
also owning the shop, I got a lot of rescues, a lot more rescues where either the, you know, parent had passed away and now the family has nothing to do with it, or it's a very sick dog and they've done it everything and they don't have anything else. I used, I could take them and literally turn their lives around, get rid of their cancer, stop their seizures, get rid of their lame, all of this. So all of this I was able to do. So it was one of the best decisions that I ever made. Issue is I still have that business and I opened up a second one and now I don't have time to run it, (laughs) but it really, really served its purpose and helped me so much in developing these tinctures and seeing what dogs were suffering from. Yeah. It's, I mean, it seems like the perfect scenario that you could like really be, I think the front line would be like the appropriate way to describe that. (laughs) Uh, People people go see their groomer more than they go see their vet. Oh, so, for sure. You know, and then the people that don't take their dogs to a vet at all kind of thing. And, you know, I, we actually call ourselves kind of a medi spa now because we, we have a vet um, that oversees everything that we do so that when we do have a, something medical come up, come up like a skin condition or, you know, a rash or something, we can go, this is how you can treat it all naturally and help your pet without it. Having yeah. It, it almost kind of reminds me, it makes me think of like, teachers, um, you know, they see kids every day and they can see if the kid's hair is not getting brushed or they've got a rash or a bruise or something like that. And the groomer kind of can serve that purpose too. Right. Exactly. So that's kind of how I ended up with Beautify the Beast and CBD Dog Health um, and Firefly Farm I I already had. Um, My go dog, my mushroom tinctures. Well, I mean, CBD Dog Health, even even when I learned animals had the same system, I went out to try to find a pet product and couldn't find one, which is why I was like, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, it was that time, like when you were looking for it, it was right before, you know, anything came out. Right. And remember now I've learned what should be in that bottle and what really works. So even when pet products started coming back, coming out, they were broad spectrum products. They were products that weren't actual medicine. Mm-hmm. So, which, which kind of bothered me because, you know, not that a broad spectrum product is going to hurt you, but it certainly isn't going to help your dog with seizures or cancer or major disease. So that kind of like upset me. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess right. why, you know, couldn't even figure out why there was a broad spectrum for pet. full spectrum is like the key word. That's what we want. Yeah. Full spectrum Mm -hmm. means it has all of those compounds that were extracted from the flower, all those medicinal compounds. Broad spectrum existed in the human side of things. And that's when they take the THC out, but it just is not detectable. So they take out it so that it doesn't get detected on a lab test. Um, But I couldn't figure out why it existed in the pet industry because dogs don't get drug tested for their jobs. So what the heck do they care if THC shows up? Well, I found out if you wanted to launch a product before the farm bill, then you launched a broad spectrum product. Oh, I see. The problem was the THC. So that's why um, broad spectrum products are on the market and why the fear of THC is perpetuated into the end of time because those products are trying to scare you away from that THC is dangerous. So is is THC toxic to dogs? THC absolutely is not toxic for dogs. I'll give you two stories to prove that it's not. A, one, I have a Doberman um, who was diagnosed with osteosarcoma 26 months ago. I actually just uh, lost her. Uh, She just passed and um, we treated her completely holistically. We didn't even amputate her leg until 22 months when the tumor got too big and started to cut off circulation to the foot. And we treated her with a full spectrum hemp extract about hundred milligrams a day. And we gave her eight to 10 milligrams of THC every single night. Um, and she thrived. She did not die. She did not get poisoned. She did not nothing. Um, so she um, did really well. And we're still trying to see if she's broken records. We're seeing if we can find anybody else who's had a dog that lived this long um, being treated holistically. And then also in 1973, they actually did a study to see if THC was toxic and how much it would take to kill a person. And like they do on most research studies for humans, they do it on animals. And they did it on lab rats, beagles, and chimpanzees. And no beagles died, no chimpanzees died. um, And they were giving them 9,000 milligrams of THC. 
which oh wow, I no one would ever do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's your proof right there that it will not um, kill them. And it, it, if we ever have a situation where a pet gets a dog gets into someone's marijuana stash and they get sick and die, it is usually because of the other ingredients of whatever they ate. Not if they were to eat just the flour, if they were to drink a whole bottle, it, it will not kill them. It does not interact with the same systems that an opioid will. will. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't interact with their heartbeat and their breathing and um, cause them to die. So, so if someone had like uh, pot gummies, they might have xylitol in the gummies. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Or another ingredient or chocolate or raisins or whatever it is that's in the mm-hmm. other things, something synthetic. But yeah, an all natural product will not cause any, won't cause any harm and will not cause them to die or overdose. As a matter of fact, (laughs) if your dog does get into your uh, stash for some reason, and we've done this a million times, the best way to dampen the effects of THC is to give them CBD. CBD actually dampens the effects. So I have had, I have one of my shops is in downtown Tampa. So we, we have a lot of cannabis users. In <laughs> so one day I see this guy down his hands and knees with his dog and his dog's not standing up. And I run out there. I thought I actually ran out of the bottle because I thought I was having a seizure. And I ran out there and I'm, I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, I don't know. He won't stand up. He won't stand up. And I looked at the dog and then I looked at him and I went, did you get into your stash? And he was like, how did you, how, how did you know that? <laughs> Are you the cops? <laughs> So yeah, I gave him the CBD and to this day, the man sees me like across three blocks and he's like, that's the lady that saved my dog's life. I'm like, I just, just dampened his high a little bit. That's it. <laughs> well, you're saving lives uh, with CBD there. Okay. So now, okay. So we're, we're caught up. We've talked about CBD, how you got interested in it, how the grooming salon came into play. Um, now you're, now you're doing the medicinal mushroom tinctures at what point in this timeline did your natural dog come into the picture, the, your online storefront, correct? So, um, of course I start searching for all of the best products and realizing that there really aren't that many. Um, and I, I'm very strict on what can be and not can be in them. Um, and because it took so long to find some of these brands and some of them aren't well known, you know, they're like a woman who's been doing this forever, who bottled her stuff kind of thing. That's why I created your natural dog so that it could house all of these things. Of course, they're in my store, but, you know, because I have a podcast and, you know, Bert, I- <laughs> sorry, we've got a UPS situation. Bert, good job. Leave it. Okay. Go ahead. All my listeners know that Bert hates the UPS truck. (laughs) So cute. Do we such a good job? (laughs) Just get away from my door. (laughs) He knows their route. So he'll go to the front window and then they always circle around the back. So he'll come look for it back here too. (laughs) That is so funny. That is hilarious. All right. So I'm sorry I interrupted you, but you um, curated like the things that you were finding in your online store. Right. And, you know, like they would be the best whatever the best product is or whatever I would need. Or if I saw an animal suffering from something and I couldn't find it, I would start researching it. And often if I found the one good product, I would find a line of good products or a good person kind of thing. So that's kind of where it existed. It's like, you know, we, we do consultations also all the time. I do it as the cannabis expert and mushroom expert with one of my holistic vets. So a lot of times it was, you know, well, where do I get this? So now we just send them to your natural dog to go get it. So that's why it existed. I also have a podcast uh, where I interview a lot of the vets or the people who create the products, or uh, a lot of times I'm talking about my stories of the dogs here at the farm um, or the pet animals on the farm. That's what's also great is that I've been using this medicine on all animals all animals that anybody with a spinal cord. So your lizards, your birds, I've had unbelievable success with birds. I work with a rescue bird rescue in Hawaii who uses our products on everybody. And it really is amazing um, how well it helps birds. Horses, gosh, horses, I feel like are like so stoic and don't show their pain, what Mm -hmm. they're suffering from. um, And they react so well to it, but dogs are the best dogs are who have, more receptors than any other animal 
Um, one of my favorite vets is like, yeah, that's because they've been eating it in the wild for, you know, however long, but they, it is a game changer. It's a, your dog is, um, you know, stops jumping up on the couch because it's got some stiffness in its hips to giving them, you know, a full spectrum hemp extract for two days and they're back to normal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just, the reason that I think people are, don't trust it is because it does help so many things because the endocannabinoid system that it interacts with is the master system in your body. And it it's in charge of all the other systems in your body. So if anything is wrong in any other system, it's the endocannabinoid system's responsibility for bringing you back to homeostasis. Mm-hmm. If you have a deficiency or your pet has a deficiency in its endocannabinoid system, just so happens this magical hemp plant has a uh, phytocannabinoids that interact with our endocannabinoids <laughs> and fulfill those deficiencies and bring us back to normal. So inflammation gets rid of inflammation. Inflammation is the basis of all problems and disease. So if we can keep inflammation at bay and not getting out of control and support our immune system, you really can fight off any disease. What if your pet could see an experienced and compassionate veterinarian without ever leaving the house? This year, I discovered Better Vet, a mobile vet that empowers pet parents to get expert veterinary help from the comfort of their own homes. Our pets often associate carriers, car rides, and vet offices with anxiety. By examining your pet at home, it not only eliminates stress and fear, but it also allows the doctor to see your pet in their natural environment and better assess their health. I used the Better Vet app to book a wellness exam for Bert and Lucy. Dr. Olivia Wilson and her vet tech Amanda brought the vet's office to my house. For Lucy, this was great news because she gets a lot of fear in exam rooms. At home, she could have her emotional support stuffed animals with her at all times. Dr. Olivia did a thorough exam on both dogs, answered all of my many questions, gave Lucy a rabies vaccine, and took a blood sample from Bert all right in my living room. After our appointment, I compared the price to a brick and mortar vet that we visited last year, and it was only slightly more to have an expert vet come to my house. Well worth it, in my opinion. Would your pet like home vet visits? I love this experience so much, I became a better vet BFF. Check out bettervet.com and use my code BVBFFTMystic to get $100 off your first visit. I know it's long, so I'll put that code in the description for this episode. Treat your pet to vet care of the 21st century at bettervet.com. I can can see how people can get skeptical because... They're like, how can I do all these things? Um, and I know that, you know, in order to market and sell a product, you need like some kind of specific marketing message. And that was always one of my problems with a lot of CBD stuff. It, w- it would just say it's for anxiety, for dogs with anxiety. And I was like, well, I want it for my dog with joint problems because I have big dogs. And it makes you feel like this isn't going to work for them. Yeah, how does like, an anxiety this is the- med work on right. joint Soreness. Are they like, this is the anxiety blend and this is the joint blend. And I'm like, right. Is it the same thing? (laughs) Right. And so I was just explaining this to someone else is that imagine like if you compare it to mushrooms, so medicinal mushrooms. So we know turkey tail is good for this and lion's mane is good for this. Well, the same thing happens with cannabis, but you don't know about it because it's different strains of cannabis. So you don't know about the different strains because you know, we weren't told anything about that. And we're also taught that this one drug is supposed to target this, and this one drug is supposed to target this. But if there's a plant that grows like a weed that does all of these things, that will put this one drug and this one drug out of business. So therefore, you're never going to get the message that, yep, one plant 
And cannabis isn't the only plant that does these amazing things or these mushrooms. They really, most pharmaceutical drugs are derived from something found in nature in the first place. So we have been, you know, brainwashed to think that it's supposed to be a specific thing and how can one plant handle all these things? Well, we'll talk about the anxiety part of it, but the inflammation part of it makes sense. If it gets rid of inflammation, that's how it's helping all those disease and pain and everything, because that's what it's doing. But the best part about it is that it is an immune modulator, meaning if you have an autoimmune disease like I do, that my immune system gets ramped up, it'll calm it down. Or like most people, we need to activate our immune system to fight off something. It'll do that. It belongs to a group of plants and fungi called adaptogens. And these adaptogenic plants, herbs, mushrooms, when you put three or four of them together, they become super powerful and synergistic. And they literally get into your body and adapt to what your body needs and takes care of it. So that's what I'm into. And that's why it seems like I'm into so much, but mushrooms are so much like cannabis. It's, it, it, it's kind it's of, oil. it's a good metaphor for your life <laughs> and your right. career. They kind of do everything. They're kind of everywhere, wherever, you know, you need your dog groomed, you know, Angela's got it. You need some <laughs> CBD. Angela's got it. You need to know where the best holistic vet is. Angela can tell you that. Um, so it's really a good metaphor for you, I think. Um, speaking of, how do you juggle all of this? I think that, um, you know, so many of my listeners are also juggling many things or they have a full-time job and they do their pet business on the side. And it just seems like there aren't enough hours in the day. So do you have help? Be honest with us, please. (laughs) I, I do. As a matter of fact, the reason that, um, my groom shop is kind of like this, oh my gosh, is because I did buy it with a friend of mine who then backed out and didn't want to do it. So I'm kind of left with it by myself. Um, And the reason that it drives me crazy is because I'm one of those entrepreneurs that I want to put 100% in and there's no way to put in 100% into four things. Um, So yes, I do have really good help. Um, my business, my partner in life and business has helped me, has quit his career and helps me run everything, especially helps me with my farm. I don't take as many rescues as I usually do. Now, all I take are dogs that are sick so that I can try to turn them around and see what I can do with these wonderful mushroom and cannabis and diet, which is also Mm -hmm. probably the most important thing. Um, but my go dog is my mushroom tinctures. And, you know, I literally yell out in my house, like, really, I have to make a mushroom tincture now. But it was just like cannabis. I couldn't find anybody making a true medicine, making it correctly back in whatever. And now here I am with mushrooms and I have found somebody, but they are grown in China and they're a beautiful product. Nothing wrong with the product except mushrooms, just like cannabis are bioaccumulators. So they suck all the toxins out of the air and earth. And, um, I didn't want to get them from China anymore. So I found the person who was doing it right, making human products. And then for two years worked with him until we created the ultimate, uh, dog product, but I only have three tinctures and they were made for dogs that were here at my farm. So one is my cancer one, which has my five favorite mushrooms that have been studied in research that have anti-cancer or anti-tumor qualities, you know, help the immune system. So I have them in one tincture. And when I was doing the powders, I was putting it in the food. When you put five mushroom powders in the food, it starts getting muddy or they don't like the taste or whatever. Now it just tastes sweet because it's in glycerin, which is an Mm. organic um, preservative. So it just made my life easier than having to give a dog five different mushrooms. And it's probably concentrated into a little bottle instead of all these separate bags. They look just like this. So now it's easy one to two droppers, either right in their mouth or on their food, instead of me having to put a whole bunch. So it was more of a convenience thing. And I wanted to source them from the United States. They're grown in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon, where one of the biggest myceliums uh, exist. It's over 2,400 acres. Is a mycelium a mushroom farm? 
Mycelium is like the roots to the mushroom. And it's been called the internet of mother nature, of nature. It's how all the plants and trees and everything communicate. And it's really, really cool. And it does have some medicinal compounds in its actual mycelium. Problem is the mycelium is attached to the ground or whatever it is. But the mushroom body, the fruiting bodies is where you extract all the medicinal properties out of. And that's, you're going to find a ton of mushroom products out there, but there's literally one or two doing it right. You don't want just the mushroom. If you're taking it for medicinal property, you know, for its medicinal properties, you want to extract the properties out of the mushroom. So if I just eat the mushroom, I'm not going to get the benefits if I were to extract all the medicinal properties out of it, which you can do yourself. You can dry, you can grow them yourself, you can dry them, and then you hot water extract them. Some need alcohol to get some of the compounds out. But what most mostly is on the market is just dried up mushrooms. So if you do end up with a mushroom product at home, you still have to extract the properties out of it. It would be like you going to buy hemp or cannabis and you, me just giving you the dried up flower. Yeah. And I'd be like, you what do I do with this? The properties right. out of it. Mm-hmm. So um, unfortunately, just like cannabis or hemp, there's no, reg- well, not cannabis, but hemp, there's no regulations on it right now. So anybody can put out anything. And that's what's happening in both industries where the only way that you can guarantee that you're getting what you think you're getting is by a certificate of analysis, which is called COA, which will show you what is in that bottle mm-hmm. and what's not. It should show you that it also doesn't have any pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, solvents, or anything left. I think that. one of the hardest things I think for pet parents is, you know, I know that you're supposed to look for this certificate of analysis on CBD and, and I guess mushrooms and other things as well. Um, but understanding what that report even means is kind of beyond my comprehension. And I would, I'm kind of like a, uh, crazy dog mom. So like for your average dog mom, I think it'd be really hard. And that's why I think it's so great that you've curated what you trust, um, in your online store and, you know, have your products and then also recommend other things that you trust because, uh, like, you know, it's great to know you should read this analysis, but what does the analysis mean? <laughs> right. And and this is what I do a lot of talking about. You know, you want to, when you're looking at that COA for a CBD product, you're going to want to make sure that you see those other major cannabinoids, including THC. So if you see that little blip or the percentage for THC, then you know you've got a full spectrum product. So that's all you have to worry about on that. On everything else, it's pretty easy to read. It should say ND or zero. And it is, um, or like zero, zero. And then sometimes there's some little numbers or whatever. And that's all the stuff that's going to show you there's no pesticides, herbicides, um, heavy metals, which is funny because I did find somebody with their brand up. It's their second CBD brand. First one, he didn't bother with the COA. Second one, he's following, you know, my school. So now he, all he does is talk about a COA. So I went to a COA and found lead. So it is important that you look at them. But nine times out of 10, you're not going to be able to find them. And that's when you should move on. So if you're mm-hmm. on the website and you see a product that you like, looks good, and you don't immediately see an easy way for you to get to that COA, move on. Move on to another one. That's I great say, advice. Because there's your, plenty of to- options out there. Yeah. Oh, and most mm-hmm. of them have no CBD in them at all. Most of them are um, hemp seed oil. Like for instance, if you're shopping on Amazon, God knows what you're getting because it's not allowed to be sold on Amazon. So it's oh, good to know CBD. You can't say the words full spectrum. There are full spectrum companies that are on Amazon, but the majority of them are just hemp seed oil or nothing. I just went to Chewy to see if Chewy was selling CBD. So there's brands that have the word hemp in them and they have nothing in them. So I think it's funny. I think they're probably what's happening are waiting for everything to be legal and then they'll be able to go, okay, it's in there. <laughs> you know, there must be some uh, some online marketing law, some kind of laws around online, using these words online because a CBD brand um, was 
reaching out to me because I have a course about how to use Pinterest um, to get more traffic to your website. And they were asking me if there were any... Now I understand. I didn't understand the question at the time, but they were asking me if they would have any run into any problems using the word CBD on Pinterest. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think so. I did some research. Plenty of stuff comes up when you search for that on Pinterest. Um, but I didn't understand how many restrictions there were until right now. Oh, it's ridiculous. I've been banned, shadow banned, taken down. Put back. I mean, our digital marketing agency now specializes in it. Has a picks up a phone and talks to someone at Facebook now. Because it is impossible because you have to cut. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All of it's ridiculous. And nobody knows the definitions of anything. So CBD is one co- compound in the cannabis plant. You know, so some you can say hemp, some you can't. What is it today? I uh, just wrote, somebody just wrote me. You can say full spectrum hemp oil, but you can't say tincture or, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. So right. And whoever all, comes up with the rules, they have no idea what e- this even means, probably. Well, A, the definitions, um, two of them are made up by the United States government and they're wrong. So we have to like, you know, if I'm in the cannabis industry, I have to abide by what they're calling hemp and what they're calling marijuana. Marijuana is a slang racial term. Why the hell did we keep that? So nobody knows anything. So it's so confusing. I say that the best way is people like you, bloggers, podcasters, people who are going to do their research, the boutique shop, pet shops who have done all the research for you. And or if you're going to go online, look for that COA. That's the only way to prove what's in that bottle. And remember, it's already grown organically if it's under the farm bill. And the last thing that I like added to my list, because it was like my top four things to look for when you're buying, um, is who's behind it. Who's behind it? If you can't find the person behind it that created or formulated it, move on. Yeah, that's a good point. Someone trying to make money because this is something new. So you're going to want somebody who know who did their research, who went to school, who knows what they're doing. Nobody's practiced more cannabis on pets, med- medical cannabis on pets than I have. And I'm not a vet because vets aren't allowed or they weren't taught or they were scared of it. So I'm the one that teaches vets how to use it now. Well, and that's why it's important, I think, to um, you know have these conversations with the real women behind the brands who are innovating, who are taking risks. Uh, and who are really doing the work and spending years developing the best products for dogs in in all categories. Right. Um, you know, I think that not to toot my own horn, but you guys can go back and listen to over 200 episodes with female founders who are doing amazing things. Thank you um, for doing that because it, I mean, to me, a woman that is behind a brand, she's got a story. There's a reason it, it exists. And like me, it was a huge hole in the market where nobody was doing it right. I mean, I can't believe I'm I made a mushroom tincture because I couldn't find anybody else doing it. I really couldn't. And I think that it's now that I've done it, I know what it takes. I know where to source. I know how to manufacture. I know how to do all these things I never thought I'd know how to do. Um, and it, it, it's difficult because a lot of people are out there. Got to remember that this is an industry that's unregulated. So if you're a bad player and you're just out to make money, what a what a great place to end up, which is why our dog food brands are owned by Mars and Mars and company and Smuckers and all them. Nestle and everything. They yeah. don't have to make real food. They can make crap and then sell it to us and There'll be no consequence. What's the consequence if my dog food kills your dog? Nothing. It's considered property. They go, how much was your vet bill? And Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but that it's not okay with me. So. No, I recently, well, not so recently, a couple of years ago was doing something and needed to, for insurance purposes, state the value of my dog, Lucy, uh, in case I needed to replace her. Uh, And I said, $5 $5 million. <laughs> right. And they said, that's not realistic. And I said, it is for it is me. me. <laughs> yeah. I will second it. <laughs> I will witness your $5 million valuation of your dog. 
And that even still wouldn't come close. Maybe that I could clone her then maybe. Um, well, Angela, it's been such a pleasure to have you on and learn about, you know, how you juggle all the, all these different kind of facets of your business, but why they're all really necessary to get the right products out to pet parents. So, um, if you could tell us where people can go to learn more about you. You bet. My website, Angela Ardolino, which is my name.com. Um, they can find CBD dog health, micro dog, your natural dog, everything there blogs. Um, I do by full protocols of everything that I do, you know, that I have had success with, with pets, especially senior pets, geriatric pets with issues. I have those up there. So I'm an open book, share everything. And if anybody ever has any questions and I have made it my mission to find some of our country's best holistic and integrative veterinarians. So if anybody's searching for that, most of them are available on telehealth now, which is a beautiful thing. So yes. if you're empowered and you know, it's great. You can get your x-ray blood work, send it to them, and then meet with them and come up with a plan. So I love that also. Wonderful. That's a great suggestion. Uh, and thank you again so much for, for your time and all of your expertise today. You bet. Thank you so much for having me. What did you like most about this episode? Find me on Instagram at teamistic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog-inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wearwagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.